I'd like to just go over some of the other sketch tools that I feel are incredibly important to kind of learn and know some of the tricks within. And to do this, I'm going to start a new part. And you'll notice that when I start a new part, we set it up to start a new sketch immediately on the XY plane, uh, just as we would machine geometry. Now, the significance of this is, is some users complain that they believe that you can't just machine 2D geometry. Well, that's false. In, in HSM, you definitely can machine 2D geometry. And you have more control or more flexibility to be able to do this properly within the sketch environment in HSM than you do in Legacy Cam. Similar to Legacy Cam though, a tool that most users like is the ability to start off a sketch in the position that they know they want to be in. Or in some cases rather, you want to start at your origin point of your of your part. So in order to do that with an inventor, you can just start any of the sketch tools, and in this case we're going to start the line tool. And you'll notice that when I'm in the graphics window here, I have some numbers, my x, y coordinate positions. Now you can just generally get close if you want to and define things later. That's the beauty of parametric CAD. Or I can hit the tab key, and that immediately puts me into that dialog box. Now from here, I can just enter my numbers. So if I know that I want to be x minus 4 inches and y 2 inches to start this sketch, then that's going to put that sketch at that point for the start point. You'll notice that the next dialog box that you are entered into is the length of the line. So from here, I can just put 6 inches in here, and then it will create a line at 6 inches, and I have a defined point. And the only thing I have that's uncontrolled here is the angle of the line. If I just go to 0 here, I can just click it. Now, in the line tool, it automatically assumes that you're creating a polyline. Well, if I just wanted this one line, I can hit the escape key. Now, this is not in the origin of my file. So at 0, 0, let's say I wanted to actually be at 0, 0 in this sketch. This sketch is undefined. As we discussed earlier, this is, this is a green sketch, not a black sketch. It hasn't turned black, de denoting that it's been fully defined. So it can move anywhere. So this is kind of a, a, a worthless thing. Well, it's very simple to just drag an endpoint in Inventor and anchor it to the zero location. So now I have a, a six inch line that I've created basically using dialog similar to how I would in most legacy CAD CAM products. But to continue on with this project I can I can start the line tool a little bit different. I can use the L key and that puts me back in the line tool and I can continue on by grabbing either a midpoint, a vertice, an endpoint, tangents of arcs, things like that and, and you'll see that, that Inventor will highlight that green once again. Now if I wanted to continue this line and, and the cool thing about the line tool is there's two tools in one. So I'm actually going to just go ahead and sketch this bottom line from a start point relative to this endpoint at zero, 0, and I'm going to use my inference lines to line things up here, but I'm going to do a little trick, okay? I'm going to hold and click, click and hold my left mouse button down, and you'll see that the point turns from green or yellow to gray. That denotes that I'm going to continue with a tool, but the tool has changed. The line tool is going to automatically become the arc tool, and you'll notice whatever direction I pull that arc in is the direction that's going to to create the arc. And you'll see that I can create constraints automatically just by anchoring things down to endpoints. You'll see it created the two tangent constraints. So in this case, if I were coming in and making a quick slot on a part or, or in some jaws, for instance, I could just go ahead and do a quick sketch like this, could strain it as needed, and then, and then and to define this all, all the way, I'm going to go ahead and click on General dimension and I can click it up here on top of constraints or I can use my right click again and I'll click on that arc and that's going to fully define this sketch. Now the significance again to this is just that it fully defines a sketch so that this geometry can't accidentally be moved. Okay. Now if I needed to change the definition of this arc, this is actually a 1.5 slot then that finishes that sketch off and that rounds that out. I can finish this sketch and I can actually go into HSM in the cam side and start programming this. Now the problem with doing HSM or using HSM with 2D geometry is, is that 
the definitions are then left up to the user. And we'll go over that in another session. But just so you know, HSM is definitely capable of doing that. Now I'm going to close this part without saving it. We're going to go ahead and cover the next tool. And we'll go ahead and do this in an existing part. I'm going to switch from my default back to our HSM programming project. And I'm going to open our front pump cover once again. So the, the next tool I like to cover is a tool called Project Geometry. So the significance of this tool becomes really evident whenever you start doing things internally into a part. Uh, so what I would like to do on this part is I'd like to create an internal groove in the center of this feature. Now to do that I'm going to do one of two things. I'm going to use a work feature to start my sketch. Once again I'm going to use a plane. I'm going to left click on the first surface and then left click on the second surface and that's going to cut that feature in half based off of that height which is perfect. I want to have my sketch be right in the center of this part. So now that I have that plane I'm going to left click on it and, and you'll see left clicking on a plane or a surface you'll get a couple of glyphs. Now these glyphs are meant for shortcuts and it, it really is a nice tool to be able to use these glyphs and just be able to create a sketch directly on that surface or that plane. Now that I'm in the sketch I do have one issue with how I'm viewing my part and that is is that I can't actually see where I am on my sketch plane in basically in the center of the part. So they give you some tool sets down at the very bottom of the screen when you're inside of Sketch to use. And one of the tools that's most important is this Slice Graphics. When I click on that, that automatically takes all of the geometry from the plane of the sketch up towards the viewer and gets rid of it so that I can see where I'm at in my sketch. Now this is perfect because I'm going to create a groove in, inside of this feature. I'm going to go ahead and go to my top view here. Now this groove is going to be based off of this internal, this ID here. And what I'm going to use is one of the next most important tools, which is project geometry. And what I'm going to do, and there are several ways to project geometry here. You can project cut edges, which in this case is what I'm going to do, or you can pro project regular edges. And basically you just enact the tool like any other tool, and you left click on that feature. And what you'll see is, you can see that it put that edge into the sketch. I'm going to go ahead and undo that, control Z, and I'm going to project cut edges. Now that projected all of the cut edges from this sliced plane. Now I don't really want to do this because I'm not going to use all of these sketches, but I did want to show the tool. So I'm going to control Z, I'm going to just use the regular, and you'll see that it's modal here, so you will actually need to switch back to the original tool but I'm just going to grab the bottom edge of that arc and it will project that bottom edge onto my sketch. Now I'm going to use that with another tool in combination which is going over to our modify panel. I'm going to use the offset tool because my groove is three millimeters in from that hole. So what I'm going to do is create a dimension from the two at three millimeters. Now that I have that sketch and this projected sketch, I can create my groove feature quite easily just by using the extrude tool and using the extrude cut method from center. And you'll see that I can grab that geometry internally. And that will automatically take and slice that geometry out of the center of that part. To get more information about design and sketch, you can always check out more videos here on Pluralsight.com regarding inventor design.